when people think conventional hydrometallurgy, they usually think of solvent extraction. And that's a very mature process. There are new extractants being developed, but the technologies themselves are very mature. That's more of a, a low risk approach. You know, there are many different types of selective extraction, selective ion exchange type systems that can be much more targeted. And it really is about developing that, that network of components that fit together as circuits. Like I mentioned, having to have these types of impurity removal systems upstream of product removal systems adds cost upfront in CapEx, adds operating costs and reduces your operational efficiency and your recovery ratios. So I think it really is that the entire strategy of how you actually do that. And you mentioned that the high value components people think of nickel cobalt, sometimes you're able to, to extract lithium. There are many other components in these trains. I mean, people think of things like the fluorine and the phosphorus species as contaminants, as impurities, but those elements are still needed to make new batteries. So you can remove them as an impurity in an inert or non-hazardous form. You can treat it as a waste, but there's much more value in actually extracting them as products and return them right back into the market, even though they may not be as high of unit cost as the nickel cobalt upfront. So I think people who say, you know, we're going to do a generic hydrometallurgy train or all hydro trains are similar. That's a bit, you know, shallow of a statement. It's really about designing this as an integrated network and having it work with that strategy to balance the operating costs with your recovery efficiencies and, and not just going for the high value components. And you, you mentioned lithium specifically. I mean, lithium is challenging to recover in a recycling system because it's designed to be the mobile ion within a battery. So it's literally in, in every component. So when you start disassembling and sorting, you can segregate different elements relatively easily, but lithium itself is really in, in all of those components. So it's not just be able to recover some of it, not just the aqueous lithium, not just what was dissolved in the non-aqueous solvent, what was embedded in the active anode and the cathode, and really getting to a process where you can recover not just the primary streams, but the side streams, the recovery streams, those are really how you get to the much higher recovery rates for all of these ions of value.